Hi, fifth graders. I hope you guys had an awesome day today. Uh, Georgie and I are both kind of home. Well, Georgie's sick, and I'm home with recovering some from some dental stuff. Uh, so I am very sad that I wasn't with you guys today. That would have been much more fun. Um, but it is, has been kind of nice being home with this little rascal. Um, we're going to get into Lesson 12, and in Lesson 12, we're just going to continue um, subtracting fractions. And we'll, that's going to involve you know, uh, some regrouping. Um, so, without further ado, George, do you want to say bye-bye? Bye-bye. Say bye-bye, fifth graders. Really Sweetie kids, again, this is Lesson 12, and we are subtracting. Wow, okay. Uh, for this first one here, guys, we're looking at 7 and 1 fifth minus 4 and 1 third. Um, let's go ahead and use this strategy um, by uh, just multiplying the denominators together to find a common denominator. We can do that really easily. Uh, it's 15. 5 times 3 is 15. I'm going to switch it up for this one. Let's just highlight the whole numbers, noting, is that going to cross out? No, that's not what I want to do. Um, I don't know. I wish I had a highlighter. Can I? No, that's not working either. Um, can I just circle? What I'm trying to do um, fairly unsuccessfully is just noting the whole numbers and not unbundling them yet until we really need to. So the highlighter is not working the way I thought it would, but okay, that should give us enough of a reminder not to forget the whole numbers. Um, let's go back to red. So what we need to do first, you guys, is find equivalent fractions to one-fifth and one-third with a new and improved denominator of 15. So in order to turn 5 into 15, we multiplied by her friendly neighbor 3. So that means that we need to multiply 1 by 3. And you guys know 1 times 3 is 3. And then 3 was multiplied by her friendly neighbor 5 in order to turn uh, her into a 15. So if we multiply 3 by 5, we have to multiply 1 by 5, and 1 times 5 is 5. Okay, so after all of that silliness with me highlighting the whole numbers, we are actually going to have to do some unbundling because you guys see that we cannot take 5 fifteenths away from 3 fifteenths. But the good news is 7 is very flexible. We're going to rework 7 as 6 plus 15 fifteenths. We just rework 7 as 6 plus 15 fifteenths. 6 plus 15 fifteenths is 7. Do not forget that we had 3 fifteenths as well. Okay, so let's rename this whole addition train as 6 and 15 fifteenths plus 3 fifteenths is 18 fifteenths, okay? So we just renamed 7 and 3 fifteenths as 6 and 18 fifteenths because we are attempting to take away 4 and 5 fifteenths. Sweet, now we can absolutely do that. Let's subtract our whole numbers first. 6 times 4, no problem, that is 2. And now we're looking at 18 fifteenths minus 5 fifteenths, or 18 minus 5, which is 13. And then our denominator is 15. That fraction cannot be simplified. So that is our final fantastic answer. Let's take a look at a couple more here, guys. So we're going to take a look at another amazing subtraction problem here. We have 8 and 1 third minus 8. I'm sorry, that's a 3. <laughs> and three-eighths. Um, let's find a common denominator, this time by skip counting because it's so much darn fun. Um, so let's skip count better by our first denominator, which is three, and we're going to go la-ti-da, three, six, nine, twelve, 
15, 18, 21, 24. Cool. And then let's skip count by our other denominator, which is 8. So here we go. We're going to do 8, 16, 24, 24. 24 is our common denominator here. Keep in mind we would have found the same common denominator if we would have just multiplied 3 times 8, but gosh, then we wouldn't have had this amazing experience with skip counting. It's so fun. Um, okay, so our common denominator here is 24. And sorry if I sound like I'm kind of mumbling a bit. I can't open my jaw all the way um, because it is sore from my teeth being drilled today. And yeah, we're just making the best of it. I'm going to circle our whole number so that I don't forget about them because in my old age, sometimes I'm forgetful. I'm sure you guys would never forget about your whole numbers. Uh, let's select to transfer one-third and three-eighths into their equivalent fractions, uh, but now with a denominator of 24. So three um, is, um, is multiplied, well, I already talked about this, three is multiplied by eight to make it 24. So we're going to have to go ahead and multiply one by eight. And when we make eight copies of one, we have an eight as the result. Eight is multiplied by three to make it 24. So we're also going to have to go ahead and multiply our three by three, which is nine. Beautiful. And then this is funny. Who did this? Did I do that? <laughs> Silly uh, math teacher. I bet you guys have been cringing, cringing since I made that huge mistake. Silly math teacher changed the plus si the subtraction sign to an addition sign. Gosh, look at that. First step in being successful in math. Don't change the operations. <laughs> it's a subtraction sign. Keep it a subtraction sign. And what do you know, you guys? Here we're being asked to take 9 from 8. You can't take 9 from 8, so we're going to have to get creative. Good thing 18 is a very creative number. And number 18, ooh, I don't like the way I wrote that. That looks like 39 24ths. Um, what do I do here? If I smooth, let's just subtract that again. Um, if I... Recall, number 18 is a very um, strategic, creative problem solver. So here's what 18 proposes. Hey, why don't you guys just go ahead, rename me as 17 plus 24 24 fourths. I like where your head is at, 18, but why did you choose 24 24 fourths? Well, 18 says, your denominators are already 24, and I just want to be as helpful as possible. So I'm going to go ahead and make my denominator 24. What I'm trying to do here is break one off. And 24 24 is, is just a, a fractional name for whole number one. So all we're looking at here, you guys, is 17 plus 1, which is 18. <laughs> Don't forget to bring down whatever fraction um, that originally came with the mixed number. Otherwise, we're going to have problems. I see a lot of arrows here. Um, let's go ahead and rename 18 and 8 24 as the new and improved version of itself. So our whole number is 17. And then we're looking at 24 24 plus 8 24 And you guys know there ain't no shame in doing a little side addition. 4 plus 8 is 12. And then 2 plus 1 is 3. So what we're looking at, you guys, here, when 18 and 8 24 got creative, is 17 and 32 24 Now we are in a wonderful position to take away 3 and 9 24 with absolutely no trouble whatsoever. Let's go ahead and look at our whole numbers first. 17 minus 3 is 14. And then now we're looking at 32 24 minus 9 24. Let's figure out what 32 minus 9 is here so that we can be completely sure. Um, we cannot take 9 from 2, so we had to do some unbundling. 12 minus 9 is 3, and then we have our 2. So what we have here, you guys, is a wonderfully mixed number of 14 and 23 24.
lots of good work going on here, guys. Let's take ads. We're going to look at one uh, word problem. And for the life of me, I cannot remember everyone or anyone. Hopefully, I'm trying to remember that list that I made yesterday that showed me everyone that has not been mentioned in a um, word problem yet. Musu, I'm almost positive that I've not used your name yet. So uh, today we are going to learn something about Musu and his secret recipes for iced tea and lemonade. Okay, so here's what's going on in this problem. Musu blended eight and three fourths gallons of iced tea with some lemonade for a picnic. For those of you that have not tried this before, I would highly recommend it. It is so delicious. Um, if there was, or if there were 13 and two fifths gallons of the beverage, how many gallons of lemonade did he use? Okay, so going back to our trusted RDW strategy, we have read now, whoa. We have read now let's go ahead and draw something um so let's go ahead and draw like a giant like picture like maybe it was just like a giant maybe like one of those awesome beverage containers that have like the little spigot with like the has anyone seen these like you you twist this that way and then everything comes out like the, okay, cool. So we'll say like that's the beverage. And this is like the, this is the um, iced tea lemonade blend. Okay, so blended, he blended eight and three fourths gallons of iced tea with lemonade. Um, oh, this is confuses blended. If there Oh, oh, I see. Okay, sorry. Sorry for the awkward silence. I was just rereading the problem so that I can understand it. So it looks like what is going on here is that he blended eight and three-fourths gallons of iced tea with lemonade that was already in here. So this represents the only the iced tea. So maybe... Maybe this is, maybe there's eight and three fourths, like up to here. It's, that's the iced tea, the darker colored liquid. And then total, in the entire gigantic beverage container, there was 13 and two fifths gallons. Okay, so what we need is to figure out, okay, so this 13 and two fifths, is the iced tea plus the lemonade. And then the eight and three fourths, guys, is just the iced tea. What we need to figure out is how many gallons of lemonade were used in this beautiful beverage container. So the way that we can do that, guys, so the 13 and 2 fifths is iced tea plus lemonade. We know that in here is 8 and 3 fourths gallons of iced tea. So we have 13 and 2 fifths of iced tea plus lemonade. If we take away just the iced tea, which is 8 and 3 fourths gallons, we're going to be left with just the lemonade. So how much lemonade is used? Let's just go ahead and carry out... Um, our expression, just uh, let's go ahead, I'm sorry, evaluate our expression. Of course we don't have like, uh, like denominators, that would be too easy. We have no problem finding common denominators, so let's go for it. Let's just go ahead and multiply 5 times 4 to find, to find a common denominator of 20. Uh, and let's transform 2 fifths and 3 fourths into uh, equivalent fractions with a new denominator of 20. So 5 times 4 is 20, which means we have to multiply 2 times 4, which is 8. Uh, so we're looking at 8 twentieths. 4 times 5 is 20, so that means we also have to multiply our numerator by 5, which is 15. So of course we're trying to, we're, uh, we cannot take 15 from 8, 
So we're going to have to do some unbundling here uh, with our 13 and 8 twentieths. We can go ahead and rewrite 13 as 12 plus a fancy version of 1, which is 20 twentieths. But please, please, please don't forget your 8 twentieths. Let's go ahead and rewrite this whole expression. So it's 12 plus um, 20 twentieths plus 8 twentieths, which is equal to, I have a feeling that I'm going to be going off the screen. Um, I'm going to rewrite the expression over here, guys, just so you can see everything. So 12 plus 20 twentieths plus 8 twentieths is 12 and 28 twentieths. This is 12 and 28 twentieths is another version of, well, this <laughs> number and this number. They all represent the same amount, but this version of the number is going to allow us to take away 8 and 15 twentieths. We're just reworking it. So let's go ahead and subtract our whole numbers first. 12 minus 8 is 4, and then we have 28 minus 15. I'm going to challenge myself and do it horizontally. 20 minus 10 is going to be 10. 8 minus 5 is 3, so that's going to be 13 twentieths of a gallon for our lemonade. Do, 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 do. Awesome. That sounds delicious. Our secret word, you guys, is going to be um, what did, actually there will be a couple of secret words, what did Muthu make that was so delicious? The recipe calls for two ingredients. So these are the secret words you will check in tomorrow. Um, and I cannot wait to see you guys. Have a great afternoon. And I'll see you in the morning.